Hello everyone, this is Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. You hear my voice and don't see my face because I've been sick as a dog, but also working my butt off and just haven't had time to do the news. Well, I have had time to do the news, I just didn't want to look like, well, I didn't want to look like hell doing it. So enough of the excuses. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas, and I wish you all a very Happy New Year. And thank you all for making my show a success. I am very grateful for all the comments and likes and views that you've given me so far. And I promise you next year, you will get a lot more of Star Citizen's Addicts Anonymous. And I have lots of fun things coming. So thank you all again one last time. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I'll see you all next year. Hello, everyone. This is Nicole D'Angelo, other words known as Irina in the forums, or Batgirl. This is another hanger patch that was released just seven days after the hanger patch that gave us the fish tank upgrade, the upgrades to the Constellation, the 300 series, the Hornet series, and a couple of other things. Mostly the last patch was a build up for this one. There's a lot of hidden things still in here that are going to be made available t to the newer ships that would be added in here. Or I should say the upgraded old ships as they get PBR. But this time, we now have two brand new ships in the hangar. Ships that we've purchased and seen in the hangar or ships that we've purchased and only seen models in the hangar. So we are going to go and we're going to start off up here on the Lido deck, no, on the, I guess the living section. We don't really have an answer for this one. It's the balcony. So we're gonna go and take a look at the fish tank because we're here. And then we're gonna go look at the Avenger because it's just so gorgeous. And we're going to look at the Cutlass. And you know, I could do an Avenger versus Cutlass in this one. But I think that it's almost better to do a Cutlass versus Freelancer because they're kind of in the same class when you look at the size. So this particular hangar review is made possible by Xfade from the Star Citizens Addicts Anonymous thread in the subscriber den. Shh, don't tell anybody we have our own place to, well, I guess I let the cat out of the bag there. But he let me borrow his ship, sent it to me, and oh god, if I was a pirate, he would just never get it back. But I'm not, and I love the people on that thread, so I would never steal from them. Alright, so let's go take a look at what's changed down here. Oh, I should have turned off motion blur. If you're looking at how bad the graphics are today, please don't. I am running at a 1920 by 1080 resolution and the main reason that it's looking this poor is well I changed some things inside of the configuration file and I really just need to let them go back to normal after this alright so we're looking at the fish tank and as most of you have already seen by the countless numbers of videos out there the fish tank has changed over the last couple of weeks and we've got fish in it and a crab. You see the crab? There's the helmet. There's the crab. We saw these things last week without these fun things in it. And now we got the crab that comes out of his little cave. We have the sucker fish. We have the Midas fish. Still have that fish. I don't know what it's called. Just floating around that they gave you with the Midas fish. And you've got jellyfish. The one fish I didn't purchase was the ribbon fish. And the only reason I purchased the jellyfish crab and Suckerfish was because RSI gave everybody a thousand credits to play with or the Centurion subscribers 2,000 credits to play with or me, <laughs> not just me, but the Imperator subscribers 3,000 UE credits to play with. See, subscribing does have its benefits. I'm still waiting on 5,000 credits for winning MVP that week. but. Ben hasn't coughed it up yet. I'm sure it has something to do with his move from 
Austin to LA, I hope. Or it could just be my account's messed up and they gotta fix it. Still waiting for my badge, too, to say most valuable poster, which I'll probably never use. Um, here is a cot still that's useless, and this was added. This is a cool little feature that I'm sure will have a lot more use in the future. We got that thing over there, which lets us change our outfits. But this houses things like our weapons and boots. To me, this should just be a weapons locker. Get the boots and pads and everything out of here. Put my arc light in there, a couple of laser rifles or repeater rifles. You know, just make this a weapons storage locker. But I mean, pretty cool what you see down there. All right, so we've seen most of this stuff before, and I've put little Chucky into his better-looking pirate self. Um, maybe not pirate, maybe privateer, but for this one, he's a pirate. Just say, arg me matey. And he's going to go and check out the ship that's going to be attacking him. The uh, sound effects on the elevator are awesome, but they are out of sync. Again, there's a lot of things that just didn't make it into the patch 100%, and I'm sure it will be fixed later. Welcome to the new Avenger. This is pretty cool. This is one of the upgrades. This is not the PBR model that they showed in the actual video for the first one of the live streams we've seen in the last two months. This is the pre-PBR version of that. So we're going to get to see all the updates to it. We're just not going to see the beautiful, um, shiny, gorgeous, you know, salvate all over it look of it. But it kind of looks beefier like this. I used to make fun of it and call it like a pregnant pigeon. Still kind of looks that way, but it's, you know, this is still one of my favorite ships. And it's going to be. Like I said, this reminds me of the A6 um, intruder. I don't know why. It just does. So we're just looking at it, and we've learned a little bit something about this sh this uh, particular ship. This is the Sucker Punch, <laughs> and they are there to disrupt energy systems in the other spacecraft. So when you think of the primary mission of this ship is to be a bounty hunter, those weapons are his main tools, or hers in my case. These are the tools to take out the ship's without destroying them so you can get those criminals or escaped convicts or misunderstood citizens that didn't do it i guess you would call them um and put them in the back and well you know put them into stasis and bring them in and make your money so you'll notice up there there is only one seat up there and there will be two in the trainer version. There are two versions of the actual Avenger listed, a trainer, and of course, this one, which is the bounty hunter model, or police cruiser, whichever one you want to call it. There is now a ladder that was shown that will come down from up there somewhere, so you can climb up it. It is not currently working in this or the cutlass. There's no ladder working in the cutlass, both of them the time being you have to enter in the rear they still have made one of the best looking ships in any game I've ever seen this is just amazing every little bit of detail that they put into this ship just made me go wow the way the lights glow everything about it I love the lighting and the hangar above it now it just, everything makes me go, oh, this is the ship that I wanted and I got it. All right, so as we go inside, these are the stasis chambers. And now, what was in the old one, where the uh, actual hoses just went nowhere, you notice there's one, two, three, but there's four. This eh, doesn't make sense, does it? There should be one more in there. But they go under the floor. And my estimation is that one goes to each one of these pods. You just don't want to be in the pod that doesn't have that in it because you might not make it back alive. So these are the stasis chambers. So these people aren't going to be standing in there looking at you and talking. Once you push one of those buttons up there, consider them hand soloed. Oh, wait. That says use. That is just so cool. I didn't know you can do that. 
but now I'm stuck. Wow, that is cool. I didn't know they moved. That's a shock. Does each one of them do that? Well, I guess there has to be some way for me to throw a body over my back and carry him up the ramp and throw him in here. Who knows? Maybe I'll have a little robot to do it. So here's where things get a little glitchy because, you know, they have to get the actor in here and finish all the mocap for this, motion capture. But, you know, if you go into third person mode, it's, um, you can see a lot of clipping. They have to do some work in here. This is your hypersleep chamber. So we talk about that in every couple of episodes that I do a hanger patch review. What goes on here is that at some point you're going to want to log out and you're going to be in interstellar space or not really near a space station or a landing pad. So you want to log out and get out of the game without, you know, getting destroyed when you're gone. If you go to sleep in your hyperspace chamber, you will log out of the game and your ship will despawn and come back when you respawn back into the universe. That is probably the well, it's probably the least immersive thing, but the best thing for a human being. So you don't get your ship stolen. We are now in the cockpit, and the cockpit still has the best view out of any of the ships that I have seen to date. I absolutely love this cockpit. I think that they did a, a much better job with the actual... Well, you can tell by the pixelation and everything on there that these are just probably placeholders, but much better job giving you the displays I would expect. When you look at a fighter from today, the F-35, it's one big display, and I think that 900 years in the future that would have been better on this, but still very happy about this ship. Gorgeous. Let's do what we always do, go into third part person mode, we're going to take a look at some of the things that matter, and that's going to be the immersion factor. You know, let's look at landing gear. Let's look at the webbing and wires that go through everything. Let's look at this big bad cannon. And just the different pieces of the ship that really are going to be important. All this room is for upgrade slots and systems. And of course over here we've got much bigger scoops now to go into the engines. And this thing is a big engine, right? So we have power plants and engines are separate. Power plants are like the fusion reactor that goes inside to produce power for the whole ship. They really did make sure all the decals on here were 100% now. Danger jet blast. Oh, nope. They're still... God, that just... Oh, come on, Rob. you got to get these things spun upside down. But you know what? doesn't matter. This is not live yet. This is a first pass on a new ship. The old Avenger was not this one. This is gorgeous. All right. So I'm not going to sit in here all day and take looks at it. We have to go look at why most of you are going to be logging in today, which is going to be the actual Drake Interplanetary Cutlass. And we've got to sneak out this door now because it's the only way to get out of this thing at this point. And that mocap was there, swinging down. Yeah, that needs to be redone. And let's go over to the Cutlass. First and foremost, the Cutlass for me is definitely going to be a search and rescue ship if I get it. And after looking at it today, I would say the chances of me getting a Cutlass in game are going to be extremely high. I am starting the SCAA organization with a few people in the subscribers den. And I'll be looking for people to be joining and become officers and help out. And it is going to be called The Enablers. 
and the flagship, which is going to be tiny, not an Idris or an 890 because I can't afford them, is going to be that wonderful ship that somebody bought me, wingtips, <laughs> the retaliator that we will be calling the Debdicated, <laughs> D-E-B-T apostrophe, Ikated. So it's like dedicated, never mind. Well, you know, if you know anything about the people that are in my thread, we all have the word Admiral in our title. So, yeah, we're crazy. So we're looking at this wonderful ship, and it's boxy, it's modular, it's cheap. And we mean cheap. The closest thing in real life that I can say to this would be the Japanese Avenger from the, no, I'm sorry, when I say the Japanese Avenger, the Japanese Zero from World War II. Thin, thin armor, weak shields, highly maneuverable. I will probably guess that with the 16TR2 thrusters on this, you will have something that can best almost anything else in a turning fight but accidentally come across the nose of a 325P with that mass driver in it, you might be floating in space for a while waiting to be picked up. It's always possible, right? The other thing about this is it doesn't come with a jump drive, so you do have 12 upgrade slots. If upgrade slots are where a jump drive is going to go, you'll have, definitely have a place to put it. But I'm not sure that's exactly what upgrade slots are going to be for. I think there might be a slot for every jump capable ship. And upgrade slots might be for systems like a cargo scanner or stealth field generator. You know, kind of weird things like that. When I look at the size of this ship, it most likely resembles the size of the freelancer. So what I'm going to do is go out here to the actual ship specs page and bring up those two and compare the two. Alright, so as we stand to off here I'm going to try to get a better view as we talk about the size of these, okay? So I think the angle off like this is the best look yeah, that's the best look of the ship. And we're going to go into first person mode. So we are looking at two ships that have two different missions, the Cutlass and the Freelancer. The Cutlass is 29 meters long. The Freelancer, 32. So close. The Cutlass is 25 meters wide, and so is the Freelancer. And then you have the Cutlass being 7 meters high, the Freelancer is 8 meters high. They differ in tonnage, and I think this is going to be mainly because of armor. And the Freelancer actually is 55,000 kilograms, where the Cutlass is 35,000. And when you go inside, you're going to see it's got a huge inside. 10 tons of cargo on this ship, 20 on the Freelancer. Which I think this holding 20 tons would make more sense when you see the inside but who knows you have both of them can be crewed by two remember that's the minimum crew needed to fly this vessel it's not the maximum if you're doing search and rescue or doing other kind of missions you're gonna need the two people on the ships <laughs> you're gonna need the two people in the ship's cockpit but you're also gonna need somebody up there in the turret to protect your six you are also looking at a maximum power plant size of four in this and five in the Freelancer. So it's going to have more power for those systems. Even though I have 12 slots for upgrades here in the Cutlass, I have more power to run those and the weapons inside of the actual Freelancer. So that's going to be a big difference. I'm telling you this because they're both in the same weight class. All right. So you have two TR-4 engines that are running this ship. So it being a little bit lighter will definitely make it probably as fast as the two TR-5s that are running in the Freelancer. But then you start to see the differences. The 16 TR-2s here as opposed to 8 in the Freelancer or 
eight TR ones or TR twos across the line of Avengers and three twenty fives and um, Hornets. You're you're definitely looking right now at probably based on what the stats say here, the most maneuverable craft in the game currently. Not sure if that's going to stay, but right now, that's what I believe. This one's probably going to be the most maneuverable craft out there. Now, when you think about it, this was made for to be a low-cost fighter, a militia fighter, and also a search and rescue craft. And as such, it needs to maneuver itself into a, a pretty much a way to attach to a disabled ship and liberate the oxygen-starved I mean, liberate the stuff in there. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, what's not even... Even though I'd buy one of these and put a red cross on it, let's call it what it is. This is a pirate vessel, and most of you do-gooders are going to be out there hunting these down and blowing them out of the sky. And good pirates out there are probably going to be doing the same thing to those of us that are attacking you. Yes, I will be hunting pirates, but... I promise if you're a watcher of my show, all you're gonna do is put a all you're gonna do is put an SCAA logo on your ship and I promise I won't fire more than three times. Sometimes that's all it takes. <laughs> this is a very large vertical lift engine. Now to me you got one there and obviously these two go down over here. So I know where the center of the ship is. It looks like it's a very back heavy ship because these should be in between the center of mass and with all this weight on the back of the ship, I'm betting the center of mass on the ship is right about here, which puts it so far aft means it's going to be very maneuverable but also unstable unless there is a missing fan unit in this wing up here, which I do not see. I don't see any kind of fan unit to get this thing thrust while it's landing up here. It's worrying me. This is a very large docking collar that comes with the cutlass. This is going to be your primary way of liberating cargo from the ships that you attack. You'll maneuver your ship on top of the disabled ship, extend this docking collar, and then move through it and, well, engage in first person combat or hopefully you've only got one person in there and the three four or five of you that are rushing on there from here with your weapons are enough to scare the bejesus out of them and then just hand all your their cargo over to you so there's our two massive um, engines one being a tr4 main engine and the other one being a tr2 thruster i believe really nice looking right and we can look around the other side and say everything that's on one side is going to be on the other. So we have a very large entryway into what was supposed to be a much smaller ship. When you go in here, you'll see there's a lot of room for cargo, kind of, sort of. I would guess the cargo... Really, where does the cargo go, guys? can't go on top of here so all this space is missing now I see why they have 10 tons it's probably one two pieces of cargo in here yeah that makes sense for when you want to sleep you got a really 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 cheap economy style rack definitely not gonna save your butt if the ship is shot up so it's not like the Connie's is uh, more in tune with the freelancer, I would guess, so I'd pick the right thing. That is your toilet. Oh my god, that's just not good. And watch Scott Manley's visit for what he does with that and falls right through the bottom of the ship. I will not try to recreate that here. He owns that joke. Alright, just another rack. Alright. We've got some... It's a nice looking ship. I mean, for what it is, right? I like the use of color. Oranges, reds, and whites, right? I think the interior of this needs to beat up just be beat up just a little bit more. That's a turret for the TR4 turret, which is kind of like that rear-facing turret in the Freelancer. 
Only we don't have that over here, right? They haven't put the guns on it yet, or made this or made this workable, operational. Come up here, I'm sure these are gonna be cargo scanners and other things that tell you something. Maybe one's telling you the power plant output, I don't know. I found something cool here when I was looking at it. It says something about cat porn. It's who RT, somebody has to tell me what this actually means. What old Felice speak? Slow pull. <laughs> All right, what's this say over here? I love ton. Fluctuation. If we go back, final, previous. All right. So we've got some things going on over there. We are not, I don't know why we're not able to get into this. I mean, we were able to open up other things, but we can't get in there. Which is alright, because we can get into the pilot seat, right? And we do that. I like this display. It's kind of cool looking, right? These are just placeholders, obviously, but they're gorgeous. Alright. There's another display up here that's kind of broken off. We've got a lot of visibility out of this. A lot of visibility out of this. Now let's do our looking out the third person view. Obviously, ooh. So, are there subsystems? Yeah, there's lots of room for subsystems in here, even though... And I wonder what the fuel is. It's not liquid, but... Oh, that's pretty funny. I wonder what those meant as we go back here. Alright, that's cool looking. Alright, I like that even things that are hidden have a lot of detail in their parts. But this is just something to show you. It's a typical dual thin hull, right? Inside, outside hull. Alright, and what's up here? important uh, lots of room for extras this is probably where your modules are going to go remember it matters all of this matters like where things go because everything is going to be modeled on the game and when you're looking at the dogfighting module which is going to come out later you're actually going to be able to be hit in certain systems that will take them down and make it less well your ship less maneuverable, systems less powerful, maybe you lose power to weapons or one weapon, or maybe your thrusters are now operating at half speed because, or half the output because you've had a energy leak somewhere. So all those things are going to matter. All right, so here we go. I love the stance this thing has. It looks like a leopard or something like a cat that's ready to pounce. Definitely not as gorgeous at all as the 315P next to it, but two entirely different missions. One is to take the stuff from you, and the other one is to seek out and explore new... Oh, never mind, we'll stay away from that. All right, so let's get out of this. I like the cutlass. I didn't think I was going to. This stinks. I can't fall in love with another ship. Thank you, Xfade, for letting me see your cutlass. You made a wise decision. And I can't wait until you have your pirate hanger to invite me to so I can do another look at the cutlass. This is a preliminary look. All right. So as we come back to the front of it, I'm going to go back into first person mode. And we're just going to talk about the things that we know about it right now. There are going to be two wingtip mounted class one. And I guess I don't see them at all. I wonder if they mean wing edge, but wingtip mounted class ones. Those are going to be, they don't tell you what size they are right now, but those are going to be your primary weapons. You have the turret up top, which is going to be a class 4, of course, which could be 
just two Behringer CF 007s or something of that capacity thrown on a turret to be used as, you know, watching your six. You have one class two tentative. They don't know if they're going to do that. This is the most upgraded. You have two class three, which are missiles, obviously, and two class four tentative. The class four are the ones that are on top. They're going to be in the turret. So at this particular point, nothing is in stone with this ship. This is a preliminary look. It's not as far along as the Hornet or the 300 series or the Aurora, where when I talk about things, they're not set in stone, but they're pretty much as close to where they're going to be when things are over as possible. This is still a work in progress ship. This is its first past and first time in the hangar. And to tell you the truth, I'm much more impressed than I thought I was going to be with it. When I saw the cutlass and read about it and saw the way it looked, I was, I said, absolutely not. But if you're looking for a ship that kind of looks like it belongs in the, well, let's just call it, belongs in the Firefly universe, this is the first ship that actually looks like something that you would find in there. And really like it. Really like it. Alright, so there's not much else to talk about in the hangar. Obviously, we've got that thing up there, which is the, well, of course, that's your Christmas wreath. That's going away. And you got this stupid motion blur that they didn't get rid of yet, and some of you told me how to get rid of it, and thank you so much. I just didn't get rid of it yet. Oh, by the way, there were a bunch of stickers in there, and I'm just going to tell you that there are threads and threads and threads about them, and uh, in different places, not all in general chat either. All right, so what we're going to do over here is... Holy cow, look at that. It's just like spinning around. We're going to come over here. And we're going to try to play with this thing. Let's see what we can do. Let's take a weapon off of here. I think the only weapons that can actually be taken off of this. And used in the actual. Are going to be this M4A. Or M3A, whatever they call it. So, let's. We need the test rack. Let's add a weapon to the test rack. That's an M4A. Put it on there. Alright, good. So we are going to get out of it. We have to tab to get out. What feels so stupid sometimes, I'm sorry. I am so day quilled out right now, it's ridiculous. Trying to shoot this and having the headache I have right now. I, I hope you cut me some slack today, folks. My voice is just shot. I've worked a ton of hours and I'm going to stop complaining at this point. Alright, yeah, we've got some accuracy. And, you know, they gave us this and told us, yeah, this is something that you can do, but you know, honestly, I would have been okay without this little test bed because it's obvious to me that the explosions that these things make and the actual fidelity of the sound of the cannon is not what they're going to have in the game. And, you know, I'll drive the buggy any day, but this is kind of boring. And not to knock it, I think that this is going to be an important part of the hangar module at some point because that weapons test bed that we're on is going to be used right after you use your workbench to overclock a weapon or mod a weapon. So this is going to be important. It's not just something they're throwing in here for us to play with. I could tell you that much. But it, like everything else in the hangar, is a work in progress. So do not pick on it. You'll see real explosions and hear real lasers firing. But remember, in space, 
Do you really hear these things at all? I guess you might, right? But only inside the ship. I don't think you'd be able to hear the ones coming at you. Alright, let's jump out of this. Oh, that makes a lot of noise. Yeah, so getting on and off of it makes a lot more noise than, noise than firing the cannon. Well, I am a perfectionist, or a completionist, or a, I'm just OCD. I can't leave that weapon just sitting out there, otherwise I'll look at my Hornet and it's just not going to be symmetrical. It's going to be missing a weapon on one side and that's going to drive me crazy. So let's get this M4A back. When you take this off, make sure that you do not take that off. That's your actual weapons uh, attachment point. And then we're going to put this back up here. And we're going to go back to this. And we're going to go back to this. Alright, so one week we have all the information about the weapon. And then the next week we don't. It just doesn't make sense anymore. It's like, did they lose a file somewhere? Yeah, the graphs that were on it last week are gone. All right, let's let's just jump out of here. It's easy to point out things that weren't okay in the grand scheme of things. This patch is good. <laughs> Look at that! It just sits there spinning around. Pretty cool. Um. So, it's starting to look like my hangar is going to look when things finally come out. At some point, there's going to be a retaliator sitting right there. And then I have two more spots that I will have a gladiator and an M50 in. That completes my hangar. Xfade, thank you so much for the cutlass. And we're going to end it in the cutlass since it's a gorgeous ship and... There's a lot of you that purchased it and are interested in living, or I should say leading, a life of crime in the game. Somebody said those stickers were up here, but I don't know. Nah. Alright, so folks, this is the Hangar Patch 10, which I'm sure will be patched as time goes on to fix some of the issues that we have seen in this. We will get updates to all the ships at some point that have PBR in it and we will definitely have sh an update that will give us back things like the turret and the P-52. I'm very impressed with what I see. I always see little things changing and like I said sometimes you take a step back to take a step forward. So. This has been a review of the 10th patch to the hangar module, and stay tuned for another confession of a star citizen addict. Thanks for listening. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year. Bye. I am Hawkeye, and I think I have a problem. You see, it started all back last year with the Star Citizen Kickstarter, I looked over the page and thought, hey, Chris Roberts is doing a game again? You can't stay offside. So I threw some bucks at him and got myself a digital bounty hunter package with 300i, not knowing a whole lot about the ship. Then I actively avoided the RSI page until a few weeks ago. I looked up the specs of my 300i, watched the ad on YouTube and thought, man, I was lucky to have chosen that ship. Some cargo space for trading? some room for upgrades, some guns to protect the cargo, or go out fighting the bad guys. I am set. Of course, I didn't stop there, but cruised RSI all the time. Then I started to study the freelancer. Hmm, a lot more cargo space, some big guns, and a turret? Perhaps this would be a better cargo hauler, and then I could use my 300i as an escort. So I went and bought myself a Lancer, and Upgraded the 300i to a 325a. I'm going to escort my Lancer. I better pack a bigger punch. Great. Now I'm really, really set, I said. And I kept cruising the RSI site. Damn, that Connie is a real beast, I thought. And look at the cargo capacity. And wow, two turrets? I'll blast those triple darn pirates to kingdom come. 
So I melted my freelancer and bought the Connie. Of course the deluxe hangar that came with the Connie was so empty. And besides having a four crew ship, when there is some low volume, high value cargo to ferry around will only cut into my profits. Think about it. The Lancer would have been ideal for that kind of work. After a few days of fighting with myself, I went and bought a freelancer package with the thought of getting another hangar along, which I could use for a second base of operations in another system. But now I had two ships intended for cargo hauling and only a single fighter. This simply wouldn't do. Besides, once the DFM comes out, I will have to fly the Hornet at the start, and when the first of my own ships is implemented, I will lose the Hornet again. It took me a day and a half to get over the shock. When I realized that fact, I so had to go out and get me an F7C. Well, that's where I am now, and I'm realizing I am still looking at all the ships I don't already have and the urge to get more grows every hour. Hey, look there! A threat about using a retaliator is a cargo hauler in a high threat area! Arg! Somebody saved my wallet. Mm -hmm.